The Nigerian Immigration Service warns of possible attacks in the Federal Capital Territory after intelligence reports and some arrests. And as the country gets set to celebrate Christmas in the pandemic, the Nigerian government places restrictions on gathering to curtail the spread. And as always, we'll also will be looking through the papers this morning to break down the biggest stories making headlines across Nigeria. With that, we say good morning and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And I am Mercy Bofo. It's actually the eve of Christmas and it's very well to say Merry Christmas officially. Yeah. I, I, so um aside the hats uh for me and i'm guessing you know it's pretty much the same thing for a lot of other nigerians this feels like it's july um mm. it doesn't in any way feel like it's christmas personally you know so what are um, the reasons i mean any specific i mean I, th I think you know i think i've said it before you know that it doesn't f the christmas feel that we used to have when we we're kids is completely gone you know and pretty much the same thing with you know every other thing that comes with christmas you know the feeling the the joy in the in the air, you know, that's, that's, there was just something about Christmas back then, you know, in the you know early two thousands and then in the nineties. But it, it's it's maybe it's maybe it's I, I probably think that because we're yeah, of course. Like I think that we're um, evolving and the times are changing, and then we have to catch up with all of that. Now things are quite different now, uh, new development and all of that. So uh, apparently, that's why it doesn't really feel like Christmas. Yeah, well. <laughs> anyway, welcome and thanks for joining us once again. We always we cook off with uh, with uh, top trending stories. The the biggest stories uh, creating conversations across Nigeria today and so we're starting with of course you know um, things related to Christmas the Nigerian government and uh, secretary to the government of the Federation boss Mustafa has announced uh, restrictions with uh, gatherings as we get closer and closer to the end of the year there always are um, you know, church services that happen on the 24th and, and uh, I think on the 31st crossover night um, uh, every year and uh, the Nigerian government has of course uh, placed a 50 people uh, maximum religious gathering um, law um, you know as we get closer and closer to those days um, which of course uh, I think happened also last year you know this also created some controversy last year where people you know I, I remember that we did a report in some parts of Lagos and a lot of people said they weren't going to you know adhere to those uh, uh, those uh, uh, those rules uh, simply because it's crossover service and they will like to gather and pray into the new year. Um, you know this, of course, is happening because of the fourth wave of COVID-19 that has uh, Nigeria has eventually gotten into. Um, and I understand the federal government's perspective and the need to restrict people from you know being together in the same space to curtail the spread of COVID-19. No, so so the same the same argument you know just started when we had the outbreak would always you know still come for the, the arguments already on right now and people would say what happens when you have political gatherings i mean how come we're not very we're not putting all of those injunctions and in restrictions so yeah. uh, like we always say we're big on religion we're big on you know tradition and all what so it's still going to be the same so it feels like the same to be some double standard if government's having an event then you don't have any restriction yes. if there's going to be a campaign then you're going to have everyone you know trip out and you know how these things can actually be we've also witnessed you know several gatherings and what have you just of recent and uh, so for those who are very, very religious and some persons would think that this is, you know, an anti-religion, um, you know, policy, government, it's more like an antichrist. That's what they would definitely well, be thinking. But I totally, I mean, the truth is the virus is here, whether or not we want to believe it. There are protocols that we need to observe. And because we have the country governed in, you know, in components, in parts, in bits and pieces. So, the, I mean, religious organization, part of governance in Nigeria, they have huge following and followership. And like we've always said, we need to decentralize information as regards, you know, vaccination, creating the awareness. People need to understand that that's, you know, COVID. So yeah, it, will, it wouldn't really be a not. bad one to have, you know, people respect the protocol. And yeah, but, uh, but the thing is, you know, when, when they had these restrictions um, sometime last year, you know, we were still in a supposed lockdown. 
um, you know, there was more awareness as to what exactly was going on with regards to COVID. Right now, Lagos has very frightening figures, you know, with, um, you know, uh, testing, you know, and people who have uh, been tested positive. And it doesn't even seem like it's public information. A lot of people don't even know. A lot of people have even stopped following up with um, the NCDC's daily updates on COVID-19 testing. Um, and so, you know, it, 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 you look around Lagos, you know, which is supposedly still in, you know, some lockdown from midnight to 4 a.m. And it doesn't even seem like it. You know, there's cars on the road, there's people on the road at night, you know. And so it doesn't it feel like we are even in a pandemic anymore across Lagos and across Nigeria. So you um, and also I'll quickly mention that um, you might want to place restrictions on churches and religious bodies, you know, for crossover uh, service. But it makes no sense and it seems hypocritical because currently the clubs are full, the nightclubs are filled up. Currently, there's December concerts, you know, by the biggest music stars in Nigeria. And, they're and, and recently, the government night. also had, you know, like, um, yes. I mean, there's a festive calendar, which, you know, uh, you want to say that the Lagos State government is involved in the di different yeah. activities. So all of, all of that is going on, you know, and if there is, like you mentioned, a political, you know, um, a gathering today, people will come out. Uh, the Lagos State government has also had one or two events in the last couple of, you know, weeks or months that, you know, saw, you know, some, some type of crowd. So it doesn't make any sense to wait until, you know, you know, 31st night and say, oh, you know, we're going to place restrictions on churches. Um, it would make, you know, more sense. It would be easier to accept by the people if they were already laid down guidelines and those restrictions in the build up to that day. And so it doesn't seem different. Um, but look around you, you know, just look around the country. The nightclubs are filled up. Weddings are happening every every um, um, Saturday. Uh, there are concerts going on everywhere, and there is zero restrictions in any of these places. So you know you might as well just let the churches and uh, Christians gather. You know, um, with all of it, it's, it's not even about even putting the restriction. You also have the issue of uh, compliance and enforcing uh, people to actually respect that. So um, will we be able to check if churches are gathering, and then you have like uh, fifty? 50,000, right, or 50 persons mm. in terms of seating capacity. Is there any form to check all of that? So at the end of the day, it's just probably another well, just if chunking you, it if out. You, if you've not been checking, you know, all this while, walk into any supermarket uh, across Lagos. You know, any of uh, most buildings across Lagos today would have those uh, no face mask, no entry sign at the, at the door. But look inside. There's a lot of times nobody even wearing a face mask. No, but, so but, 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 you know, to some extent, I have, I know that uh, you can actually have like 100%. Well, compliance? I'm, yes, in yeah, terms I, of compliance. I, I agree. But I still get to see, you know, some persons. And to those who still respect and constantly understand the that they have to wear the mask. The point I'm trying I, to make. I see a couple of them. I mean, even uh, when you're going to work, you just still find a group of persons who still wear the nose mask. This is the point I'm trying that. to make. Um, there are those laws still in place. Um, compliance is very low. And I'm sure we would all accept that compliance is very low. But it's really about the attitude of the Nigerian government in able to get people to understand this, this seriousness of um, you know, the health crisis that we're currently dealing with. And because they have not done well enough with public information and being able to let people understand that, then you cannot just simply you know, place restrictions. I understand the seriousness of it and the severity of it. Everybody needs to be extra careful. I am really scared of COVID-19. I've never been positive, but I'm really, really scared. And I wish everybody felt the same way, but it's really the Nigerian government's responsibility to get people, to carry people along and let them know. So, so that's why, why you know, I, because we have actually spoken about this, especially when we had, you know, the break, uh, the Omicron variant and the fact that we're expecting uh, different variants to come through. We had had a phase of the Delta variant. Now, some experts are saying that we need to decentralize information. And like I, I stated earlier on, we're governed in bits and pieces. So you have the religious body, you have, you know, different parts and all of that. It's time for us to not just try to decentralize information, use all of those different components that we have to send the information. But like as always, I ask, what is the Ministry of Information and Orientation doing? Yeah, I mean, how much? You know, because you also have, <laughs> we also have that in different states. So in every state, you have a Ministry of Information and uh, Orientation and what have you. What is the National level orientation of agency. orientation agency? Yeah. So my question is, what, what information are we putting? How much have we driven? Because we need to hear this campaign. Mm -hmm. We need to see it. But I think that you know, we, we as a government, we always think that force would solve everything. And that's why you'd say, oh, if you don't have the nose, if you've not taken the vaccine, you can't come to work and then we're going to arrest. I'm thinking that if that approach is not working, why don't we try to disabuse? 
because it's a belief system. People do not, a lot of persons do not believe that the virus, um, you know, the virus actually exists. Once and so how do you... Of failure of, of government. Of government. We, we so so how do you even get out else. of that? It's just yeah. to constantly put out the information to create that consciousness in the This conversation we're having is, is at least a year old. I mean, I'm sure I said these things like December last year. I'm sure I said these things say this October things. last year. We always you know, say these so things every other time. If we've we been saying say this tomorrow, same, calling on government to pass out information and national orientation agencies to wake up, national information to wake up, health agencies to wake up, then, I mean, we're, we would accept that we're somehow lucky that, you know, the, the death toll has not been so bad in Nigeria. But it doesn't mean that we should be um, lazy about it. Anyway, moving away from uh, talking COVID-19, we very likely will get back to it. There has been breakfast served at the palace. <laughs> like the uh, Oni of Ife and, of course, the wife well, of the Oni of Ife, uh, Queen Naomi Ogunwusi, as uh, she is called, uh, yesterday put out a statement announcing a divorce from the Oni of Ife. This apparently is a third marriage uh, to the Oni of Ife that has failed or crashed. Um, she put out a very, very interesting statement on social media, which was a really calm statement, basically thanking God for the time that they've been together, for the three years that they've shared together, for their child, her son, that she, you know, she, uh, um, you know, bore for him. And of course, you know, also dispelling the rumors, saying that it has nothing to do with the emergence of a new queen or, you know, the prophetess, you know, that they, they also mentioned, that it wasn't an arranged marriage and some of all of that. Um, I'm going to quickly share, so I hope I can quickly share uh, from her statement uh, that she put out uh, yesterday, if I can quickly find it anyway. Um, but yeah, she says, yes, he's uh, God's way of saying, I know all about it. Um, in situations like this, there will be aggrieved persons. And she says, I at this moment appeal to all parties involved to allow uh, the peace of God with the consciousness that there is in, uh, with the consciousness that there is uh, a lovely little boy between us. I'm not sure what that is. I thank all for prayers, uh, all my prayer partners and loved ones. I remain committed to all my uh, projects, charity work and ministry. And in this newsing, I shall be focusing on God only. And also announce that she would focus more attention on her child. Okay, so um, I, I, that has actually generated a lot of conversation. And some persons would say that, oh, marriage is actually supposed to be nobody's business. Whatever happens, you know, in the private should always be there. And uh, for me, uh, we've seen several reactions. The fact that he, we've not gotten any response from the king himself, it's another one. And some people would say it's because he's highly placed. I mean, that's a king. You don't expect him to come out and talk about this in public. But I've also seen, you know, the fact that elders are saying they are trying to reconcile. So how do you even reconcile if there was not a problem? And all the quotas are also saying from, you know, the palace, the report saying that, um, they are not in the know of the separation. As a matter of fact, that the king was actually putting out some special gifts. This is Christmas, and so he's putting out special gifts. They are not in the know of the separation. Now, you have other quarters also saying she had already moved out of the house, and those who are trying to reconcile her, what happened when she was going through a lot? I mean, the, the, the point now is um, some people are saying it has to be some form of agreement. So if we have to break up, we have to agree that an, another party cannot just wake up and say they are breaking up without the other party agreeing to the breakup. Uh, that's well, where it calls for a lot of consent. We, one we one thing that I know is true is that we, um, on the outside, do not know exactly what's that's going That's exactly on what I was going to say. Mm. Um, and I hope that you know there might be some clarity. But at the same time, it's, it's really not our business you know it's it's totally you know, left, left for them to deal with their own personal issues he's the only of affair um and um you know I, um, i'm sure that he can also get married again you know i also like the fact that you know from the letter that she put out she was she it seems like she was able to or she decided to take her own mental space and her, her own happiness um as priority and she wasn't finding happiness according to that letter she probably wasn't finding happiness in you know that marriage and decided that she wanted out um, and that's one point, you know, that I thought was interesting. The fact that we are no longer in that age where women, women will decide, you know, that they would hold on to a marriage regardless of how, they, you know, they feel. Um, it, but that's, like, that's actually not that really, also. That, that's actually not going down with a lot of people. I mean, just like I have mentioned that the elders, I don't know how true that is. Like you have mentioned, we have no idea what's really going on, whether or not they are separated, especially when we have not heard from, you know, the Oba himself. And so uh, the fact that you want to have to reconcile um, an individual who says, you know what, I'm taking a work because I think I can't continue. And for whatever reason, I'm okay, you know, being on my own and finding my own happiness and space. I really don't think it's a big deal. I know that we're big on religion and tradition. Some people would say, oh, that's you endorsing tradition. But hey, should it be at the detriment of your own happiness and your own oh, health? Really? 
well, once again, we don't know exactly what's happening in Palace. And so uh, this is just sharing, you know, some of the, um, you know, major conversations that have gone on in the last 24 hours. I remember when uh, the marriage before hers also, you know, fell uh, apart. There was also these same conversations. A lot of people made their own insinuations and stuff like that. Um, but we wish um, Queen Naomi and, of course, uh, the only of you fair, the very best um, breakfast has been served. Uh, but we're not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving away from that, we're going to go back to talking just a little bit about um, health now. And that is because um, it seems like, you know, we didn't learn a very big lesson from what happened in China. Late 2019, you know, that caused the emergence of uh, the COVID-19 virus. As scientists have announced that they have discovered a 66 million year embryo of a dinosaur that was just about, um, you know, hatching. Uh, they put this out yesterday saying that they found it in some place in China. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what they were looking for. Um, if someone's ball rolled into a hole and they decided to go get the ball and then they looked at a, a little egg and said, oh, you know, this is a dinosaur egg. Um, but, you know, my take is, you know, I, I, I would just ask that they leave um, such things alone. And that has been... In the, in the current world that we live in you know leave, just so you know, so i i think you know, the, the reaction i mean i've seen the conversations surrounding that particular yeah. discovery and the just like you have said leave it there don't touch it no one even asks you to look for it in the first place i mean china we're talking I mean, about china archaeologists again. and the likes will you know they've continued to work over time you know and every now and then no but know, maybe yeah. we need to take a break yeah. we're dealing with a lot right especially now. in china we, we we need to just take a break about Advent, because sometimes I think that too much information can also be, you know, a, a huge problem, can cause a serious problem. And so, like you are saying, and every other person, can we please leave it alone and just take a break? Let's just deal with, you know, the COVID-19, the Delta variant and the Omicron that we have. And maybe, you know, another variant might just pop up in 2022. And that's the fear. You know, if you look at, you know, like you said, look, look at the response from, from every single person, almost every single person who saw this story. They said pretty much the same thing. I'm not sure what archaeologists are looking for. I'm not sure what you guys have been digging through. But at this point in the world's history, leave these things alone, all right? Don't bring up any embryos. Nobody cares if they were about to hatch. Um, let's just take a, <laughs> just take walk a break. Away. You know, let's take, take a break for a couple of years. You know, mm. nobody wants to know what happened to that dinosaur's parents um, or how long its tail is. Nobody wants to know what dinosaurs eat anymore. For now, anything coming out of China that is not electronics and, uh, and uh, cheap electronics. Um, <laughs> please. Let's not even go there. Leave it alone, okay? Um, it's scary. It, it, it really is scary because eventually um, this might, you know, become another disaster. And of course, yeah, I would give kudos to those who have continued to do research because that's how the world has been able to develop over time, you know, and we've been able to also um, let, uncover let, a lot of things. You know, we're still grappling. I mean, if we still talk about COVID-19 now, we're still going to say it's a novel virus. Uh, we're still yet to understand it. That's because we don't understand. We're still following how it, it works. We're trying to understand the dynamics, and that's why you're having different variants. Up until now, we're still trying to understand if the Omicron variant is, you know, the same as uh, the yeah. COVID-19 or the Delta variant. So um, I, th I think we need to pay attention to what we have right now on the table. And that's that. OK, yeah. so uh, this is, you know, just a subtle appeal to the uh, scientists well, and all of you. Most of this is all really just on a light tunnel because they aren't necessarily, you know, going to find a virus, <laughs> you know, but uh, it's really We're just because saying that anything everyone can is, happen. anything's possible. <laughs> yes. You know, because we, we only heard about dinosaurs from history books. Nobody got to actually see dinosaurs. And so and then we get to watch it in cartoons and stuff. Yeah. So so 2021 has been a 2020 and 2021 have been tough years for the, with the pandemic. Um, the WHO says, you know, it's very likely will end 2022. And so this is the reason everyone is reacting that way. If it's going to end in 2022, let it end. Don't go do any further research or find any dinosaurs and bring up some Okokomaiko variant uh, or Okbaleke or, 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 or variant of something. Nobody we, wants to see it in 2022, so leave dinosaurs to, alone. We need to um, move away now. <laughs> so that we don't start flying, you know, because you inhaled something, you take off. Anyway, those are our top trending stories. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going through the major stories, making headlines across Nigeria this morning on The Breakfast. We'll be back. <laughs>